Coming up, the measles, what do you need to know? Then historic mission, the first U.S. moon landing in more than 50 years. It's our picture of the week. Also, leap year. I'm Claire. Why is there an extra day on the calendar this year? So why does February 29th only show up in the calendar every four years? We've got the answer. Plus, cereal for a cause. We're at this elementary school in North Carolina with a story you won't want to miss. And secrets of a ventriloquist. Oh, I'm baby Junebug, Mr. Lester. We'll introduce you to this puppeteer who is making history and hoping to inspire a new generation of storytellers. I just want to make you proud of me. This is NBC Nightly News Kids Edition. Welcome back to Nightly News Kids Edition. I'm Lester Holt. It is great to be with you guys. We have a terrific lineup ahead, including an update on those pandas from China. Looks like a pair of new pandas could be coming to America very soon. Plus, we can't wait for you to meet this puppeteer and ventriloquist. Megan Pyfus will be here to share some tricks of the trade. And you move your hand for each syllable that you're saying. So if you wanted to say basketball, I would say basketball. Basket Did your hand just take my voice? <laughs> <laughs> and a little later on, we'll introduce you to one young girl who is making some beautiful music. But first, we want to begin on the health front with one of the stories making headlines. You may have heard about the measles in school recently, or your parents may be talking about it. It's been in the news lately because of an uptick in cases. The measles is an infection caused by a virus, and doctors say it is highly contagious if you're not vaccinated. The measles was once thought to be eradicated. That means it was wiped out because of vaccinations. Now, though, health officials are raising concerns about the growing number of measles cases popping up in some states and also around the world this year. As I said on this program since the start, knowledge gives us power and makes things a little less scary. So here to explain what's going on is our good friend, Dr. Natalie Azar. So a lot of you guys might have heard of measles. It's in the news right now because there appears to be some outbreaks in some elementary schools around the country. And we don't love to see that because measles is a disease that can be prevented by vaccines. But when not enough people are getting vaccinated, we're going to see little bumps and rising cases around the country. And you may be wondering, well, is that a bad thing? Um, and the answer is, well, it's really not comfortable. So measles can cause fever and cough and runny nose and a red itchy eye. But more than that, it can cause a really, really uncomfortable rash. You can be sick for a little while and sometimes it can even cause some more serious problems in the lung or other parts of the body. And one thing to know about measles is that it's super, super contagious, which means that if you're around somebody else who has measles, if you're not vaccinated, there's a really high likelihood that you're going to get it yourself, which is why in some cases, if there are kids in school who have measles, you may actually be asked to stay home for like three weeks if you haven't had your vaccine. If you had had your vaccine, it's okay for you to stay in school. So we basically say... Um, if somebody with measles enters a room and then leaves, those little measles particles can survive for about two hours. So it doesn't even help when the person leaves, which is which is kind of scary, I know. But unfortunately, you can breathe in the measles particles. So there's no perfect way to protect yourself if you haven't been vaccinated. That's why vaccination is so, so important to protect you. So depending on how old you are when you're watching this, if you have been vaccinated, you probably won't remember because it happens when you're about one year old. And then it happens again when you're around four or six years old. And if you've been vaccinated, you can ask mom or dad, there is a very low likelihood that you would actually get measles from someone who has measles. That is how effective the vaccine is. Dr. Natalie Azar, thanks very much for that. Well, time now for What's On Your Mind. This week, one of our curious viewers is wondering about the February calendar. Hi, Lester. I'm Claire. Why is there an extra day on the calendar this year? Bye. An extra day on the calendar. Well, Claire, that's a very good question. February 29th is only on the calendar every four years. Here to explain the history behind what we call leap year 
is our Kids Edition correspondent, Julius. Leap year. It comes around every four years. But why? Well, it all has to do with the planet Earth. It takes approximately 365 days and six hours for the Earth to orbit the Sun, a solar year. That's about six hours longer than the 365 days we typically include in a calendar year. So to make up for this missing partial day, those six hours, one day is added to the shortest month, February, every four years. That's a leap year. It's simple math. Six times four equals 24. So each leap year, February has 29 days instead of 28. So if we did not observe a leap day, our calendar would get out of sync. Valentine's Day, for example, in February, might occur in the summertime. So things would, would fall out of sync and we wouldn't be able to have the same days in our calendar that we expect. We need that leap day to keep us on track so we can expect the same thing to happen every year. Where did the name leap year come from? Experts say we use leap year because every year the days of the week normally skip one day. So if your birthday was on a Friday this year, next year it will be on a Saturday. But on a leap year, it leaps ahead two days. So what happens if your birthday falls on February 29th? Well, I went straight to a reliable source, my nanny. My grandmother Roseanne was born in 1948 a leap year. This week she's celebrating her 19th real birthday, or if you do the math, her 76th birthday. What was it like only having your birthday every four years as a kid? As a kid, I didn't know the difference. I know my actual birthday was every four years, but I would have a birthday party every year. And I could choose whether I wanted February 28th or March 1st on the years that it wasn't my actual 29th day. I had a bunch of kids from my class. We had balloons, we had birthday cakes, and it didn't matter if my birthday was February 29th, it could be the February 28th or March 1st. As long as I had a birthday, I was happy. And get this, the town of Anthony, Texas is known as the leap year capital of the world. They hold leap year celebrations every four years, of course. So all you February 29th birthday babies, including my nanny, grab your candles and party favors. It's time to celebrate leap year. For Nightly News Kids Edition, this is Julius. Julius, thanks very much for that. Well, the San Diego Zoo will be welcoming a new pair of giant pandas from China sometime this year. The move is a boost for what is often called panda diplomacy after the return of multiple pandas to China last year. No details on the exact arrival date, but we will be sure to keep you posted. Now for our picture of the week. History was just made in space. That's right, a private company announced last week it successfully completed the first U.S. moon landing in more than 50 years. And it's also the first commercial craft to reach the lunar surface. On February 22nd, an uncrewed lunar spacecraft called Odysseus touched down in the region of the moon's south pole. And now it's beaming back new photos of the surface of the moon, showing the vehicle's much celebrated descent and the moments immediately after touchdown when it tipped over on its side. This largely successful journey will ultimately help scientists as they prepare for NASA's planned Artemis missions, which will have people on board set to travel around the moon in 2025 and land there in 2026. The last time American astronauts landed on the moon was back in 1972. Okay, let's turn to a story that caught our eye. One elementary school in North Carolina is getting some well-deserved attention for collecting cereal for a good cause, all while having a whole bunch of fun in the process. Take a look at this. And off they go. Students, parents, and staff at Clemens Elementary School spent two weeks collecting cereal boxes for a local food pantry. Nearly 2,800 boxes of cereal were collected and donated. It took them about five hours to set all this up, this domino chain. No practice run required. And of course, it only took a few minutes for them to fall down. The chain wove all the way through the school, winding up in the gymnasium. 
And it was all for a good cause. Pretty awesome. <laughs> all right, in this week's Inspiring Kids series, one child is finding strength and inspiration through music. Our friend and Telemundo correspondent Miriam Arias has the story. A rising star. 12-year-old Chantel illuminated the stage with her voice. And as the duo reached their final note, the audience at Miami Art Studio erupted. That felt so amazing. I was so happy with myself. I thought they were going to applaud, but I never, ever thought they were going to stand up. I, I was so happy and full of emotion. I almost wanted to cry. Um, it was a very, very special moment. More so because days earlier, she and her family were in a car accident that almost cost their lives. I remember waking up like if like nothing happened. Then when I saw my grandma is when I got really scared. I remember telling her, are you okay, are you okay? And she would, um, wouldn't answer. She wouldn't answer me. And then I remember the people um, very desperate trying to take us out of the car. <laughs> But that day, she gave it her all. Though Chantel's parents are Guatemalan and Peruvian, she grew up surrounded by mariachi music. And the more she heard, the more she wanted to play like those artists she admired so much. Mariachis and the, their instruments, it's so beautiful. I love how they play it. And the attire, she says, the skirt, the jacket, the sombrero, they make her feel strong, like she owns the very stage. While she works towards achieving her dreams of being a star, her parents fight every day to make sure she never misses an opportunity. You were telling me before that in the future you envision yourself in a big stage hearing what name? Alison Chantel Ruiz. <laughs> Turning now to this week's Spotlight, one young woman is using her voice and creativity to pave the way for future storytellers, making history and hoping to inspire kids to reach for the stars. In a world of make-believe, Megan Pyfus is bringing her imagination to life. Just got you to be so proud of me. <laughs> her love of puppetry all started when she was 10. When I was 10 years old, I had just changed to a new elementary school and had to make new friends. I was super shy. I went to a puppetry conference with a few members from my church. I was exposed to women ventriloquists and I saw myself being able to open up just like them and uh, make something come alive in that moment. So I went home, I told my parents I wanted to become a ventriloquist. You're the valedictorian! That means you're the thirsty gold! And guess what? She did just that. Tamir and I were working on making a gift for our Grandma uh -huh. Nell's birthday. Yeah. In 2021, Megan Pyfus made history, becoming Sesame Street's first full-time female black puppeteer. I still don't know what I want to do yet. My goal is just to inspire girls to achieve whatever dream they have, no matter their background, their zip code, or no matter the color of their skin. And there's no stopping her achievements. Megan just released a children's album, hoping to inspire all kids to dream big. And joining us now is Megan Pyfus. Megan, great to have you on. 
Thank you so much for having me. I didn't catch the name of your friend. Uh, oh, I'm baby Junebug, Mr. Lester. Junebug. I like that name, and I like your outfit, by the Thank way. Thank you. I was trying to match something I thought you was going to wear. Oh, well, yeah. I, mine was in the cleaners, so uh, I just, uh, I just uh, wore okay. your basic black and blue today. But <laughs> it's great to have you on. Megan, great to have you on. Explain to me, you are a puppeteer and a ventriloquist. For our kids out there watching right now, can you explain the difference? Yeah, and then she a little crazy. No, no. <laughs> And she got lots of voices. No, so as a puppeteer, I can move puppets like June bugs. But as a ventriloquist, I can talk without moving my lips like that. You can talk so, without moving your lips. That's right. And so when I talk with June bug, I sound like this. And Megan's mouth be like this. And of course, my eyes <laughs> immediately going toward yeah. June bug. That's right. During and this so conversation. It brings the character even more so to life because you believe that He's real. Yeah, I'm a real boy. <laughs> yeah, I, I want to get into this how you do it first. And to start us off, we've got one of our kids' questions. Okay. So let's watch. Here it is. Hi, Maiden. How do you talk with your mouth closed? How do you talk with your mouth closed? Oh, yeah. Most mamas do it. So I need you to sit down. <laughs> I can teach you how. So there are only certain letters of the alphabet that you have to close your mouth for, like B. Right. A. You don't have to close your mouth. So I can for. say A. I'm saying A, a right now. My lips aren't right. moving. So you can push out the same amount of air, A, A, and it makes it look like you're not moving your lips. But for B, I replace that letter with another letter of the alphabet that sounds similar, like D. B, D, B, D. So say that sound. in a sentence how you do that. So if you wanted to say basketball, replace the B with a D. Basketball. 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 Kind of that, right? Yep, that's right. Yeah. So that then that applies for basically every letter that we would normally require our lips together. That's right. That reply, we, there's about seven letters that we replace uh, the letters with. You started this at a really early age. I know you practice a lot. I want to play another question from one of our viewers. Okay. Hello, my name is Lona. And my name is Lan. We're both from Japan. How do you practice to be a puppeteer? Bye. We love Nightly News Kids Edition. And this was my point. A lot of yeah. work went into where you are today. Tell me how much work. What kind of things you have to do? Well, I met Junebug when I was 12 years old, but I've been a puppeteer since I was 10 years old. So around your age is when I started. You can practice by first taking your own hand. You want to do it with me, Glossy? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. okay. So you take your hand, right. and we want to mimic how we move. So open the mouth like this. Okay, you don't so want to open the entire mouth because so then you're puppet. Say, hey, Megan and Junebug. Yeah, like that. Right. So drop your bottom thumb like this. Right. If you move your whole mouth, your your uh, puppet will look like this. Oh, okay. <laughs> so it's just very slight. Just, a, just yeah, a slight opening of your bottom thumb and you move your hand for each syllable that you're saying. So if you wanted to say basketball, I would say basketball. Oh, did your hand just take my voice? <laughs> <laughs> so do it again, because I want to. I want to see the movement yeah. of Junebug when you. Basketball. Okay, this is. I like to play basketball. <laughs> you like to play desk yeah. basketball. <laughs> I'm not very good. But... <laughs> <laughs> I'm not very good being a ventriloquist. As we mentioned earlier, you landed your dream job on Sesame Street. What was that like? I mean, that's got to be the all-star for a puppeteer ventriloquist. Yeah, I never imagined that I would get to Sesame Street. I grew up watching it as a child, and I even had a Sesame Street-themed birthday party when I was three years old. And so I submitted an application to the Jim Henson Company in 2017. I wasn't expecting to hear back, but in 2020, um, the producers had time to go through old submissions from the Jim Henson Company, and one of the producers, Matt Vogel, saw my application and reached out and asked if I would be interested in working with Sesame Street. So I trained um, and I learned Muppet style puppetry and joined the cast in 2021. Is it a pretty small community of, of people who do what you do? Oh, it's a super small community. <laughs> you think so, Jula? Yeah, I, it is, but it's a, it's a very supportive community. So it's immediately after I joined Sesame Street, I was surrounded by the greats who were willing to, to teach me and to learn. And so also to answer your question, I practice by learning from others. And you just released a new children's album. Tell me about that. Uh, Mr. Lester, I have a question. Sure. What? Do you have any snacks? Do we have, oh my goodness, do we have any snacks? Our snack person is off today. Uh, uh, Junebug, I can get you snacks. Okay, why don't you take a break? Okay, I'll be back. I'm sorry, she didn't feed me before we got here. Oh, okay. that's okay, yeah, we'll get you some snacks. <laughs> 
I'm sorry, Lester. That's I, okay. I That's should okay. feed him next time. <laughs> <laughs> so, so tell me about this album. So I released a children's music album um, last year. So uh, beyond being a puppeteer, I'm a creator. And so I love creating stories and songs. So I released an album co-produced with uh, Bootsy Collins and Sir the Baptist, and we brought the music to life with puppets. That's and true, so and the puppets sing as well? That's yeah. right, Junebug, he's on a song called Make You Proud. And you obviously have a wonderful singing voice. Oh, thank you. Yeah, yeah I enjoy singing. So we'll be um, doing more music this year, and Junebug and I are working on an album with um, the Soul Children of Chicago, um, right now a choir that's been around for over 40 years. Sure, yeah, yeah. I used to live in Chicago, I remember them. And uh, yeah. this is obviously a very important project for you. That's right. It's very important to me to use music and puppets to inspire kids to pursue their wildest and most unique dreams. I'm a full-time puppeteer. Yeah. And I know, as I said, when you came in here, kids very excited. We got a lot of uh, response to you oh, being wow. here today. We've got one more question, if you will. Yeah. Here it is. Hi, my name is Jocelyn from Michigan, and my question is, what would you say to black girls like me who are trying to get into like puppeteering or, or getting into the arts? Terrific question. Well, first, I'm excited that you're interested in puppetry. It took me many years to find my path. I, I knew I always loved puppetry, but I found first what made me come alive, and what made me come alive was telling stories and singing songs. And I used puppetry as a mode to do that. But I also tried working as I was an ad sales intern here at NBC. Oh, were you really? Yes, I worked. <laughs> I, did, I worked in I worked in public relations. I um, worked in dance and musical theater. I did lots of different jobs in the arts until I found what really made me come alive and what I wanted to do. And I learned that that was um, making children laugh and smile um, by doing puppetry. Every time, I, every time I've been around a puppeteer or a ventriloquist, yeah. when they walk in the room with a puppet, people smile right away. It, it's this ultimate, you know, social moment of, 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 you know, breaking any tension in the room. What's that like to have that ability? It's like awakening someone's imagination. It doesn't matter if you're two years old or 80 years old. There's a part in your mind that wants to believe that something that doesn't exist right now can happen. And that's the, the essence of hope is believing in something can happen that doesn't exist right now. And so when I bring Junebug to life, I'm bringing something inanimate to life, and so it immediately makes, I think, the soul and the heart smile and laugh to see something that's not real. Well, you two have certainly <laughs> brightened our day here at Nightly News Kids Edition. Megan, great to have you on. Thanks so much. I hope to see you again. Yes, thanks, Lester. And Junebug. <laughs> <laughs> I'm still down here. <laughs> Oh, that was fun. Well, that is going to do it for us. Parents, just a reminder, if your child has a question about any topic in the news, email a video to us at nightlynewskids at nbcuni.com, and we'll try to answer them in an upcoming episode. You can also follow us on Instagram at nightlykids. And just a program note, you can catch a new episode of Nightly News Kids Edition this Saturday on NBC. Check your local listing for the time in your area. Thanks for watching and remember to take care of yourself and each other. So long.